Her name is Opal Rosso. I'm not sure I'm saying it right. Opal is a content creator. Um, she's a freelance writer. And she's going to talk about what is software engineering and the future of software development. So, hello, welcome. Hi, How welcome. You? Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction, Isadora. That was great. Oh, yes. I'm just so pleased to be here today. Sorry, technical glitch there. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's wonderful. Like you were mentioning, I'm a writer. I'm very enthusiastic researcher. And it, again, it's an honor to be here with you today. Uh, just, to, I'm going to be speaking about surprising global opinions surrounding artificial intelligence and different countries and how they're approaching this rapidly evolving technology. So um, before we dive into like the actual opinions that we're going to get to, uh, let's just take a moment to reflect on some of these cool artificial intelligence. Actually, they're pretty much facts, fascinating facts that not everyone would know. So. The first one I'll start with is um, in 1956, the Dartmouth um, conference was considered, sorry, um, I didn't pull up my presentation, so I'm going to do that right now so you can see it. My apologies. Share screen. Sorry, technical difficulty there. My screen completely went black, so I can't see you. My apologies. I'm so sorry for that. I'm having some issues just getting the presentation to come up. Um, no, I had it, but uh, there we go. I, no. I don't know what the issue is there, but I did try to get the... Um, if you click on present. Yep. And then um, it's... So I have a Google Slides as well. So I go Google yeah. Slides and then add Google Slides and then add my presentation. And for some reason, I don't know why. There. <laughs> there we go, I got it, perfect. There we go. So back to where I was. Um, oh, now the tricky part is, is getting it to process. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna be talking today. <laughs> We're going to be talking today a little bit about, um, as I mentioned, some surprising facts. So just to get going, I'm so sorry for that interruption there, but artificial intelligence uh, is viewed differently and, and there's different approaches to it. Um, it's a rapidly evolving technology and some cool facts, like I was saying, is in 1956, the Dartmouth um uh, I believe it's a university, was the birthplace of AI. So that's kind of where I left off. Um, and then I'll jump into some other facts. I'm sorry. Uh, that, that was the birthplace. It's actually Dartmouth Conference, come to think of it. And it's AI is already being used in things like healthcare to help diagnose diseases and treatment plans and improve patient outcomes. And the financial industry has also adopted AI, which helps detect and prevent fraud and makes economic predictions. So that's pretty cool. And integrating AI in self-driven cars aims to improve road safety and reduce the number of accidents caused by humans or human error. Very fascinating. Um, but AI is also used in agriculture to increase crop yields, reduce waste, and conserve water. Um, in some countries, actually, AI is utilized to monitor things like air and water quality and to prevent um, environmental disasters, which is kind of cool. The education sector also benefits from AI. So with this type of, with this type of technology, um, it really can personalize your learning experience and provides personalized feedback to the students. So that's good. And AI has the potential to reduce poverty and inequality by automating jobs that are dangerous, repetitive, or low paying. So that's, that's a given. It's very immersive technology. AI can address global challenges such as climate change, food security, and healthcare by providing new insights and solutions. And lastly, with my fun facts, I'll just say uh, the law enforcement and legal industries have utilized this AI technology to analyze data and identify patterns that can lead to the prevention of crimes, which is just fascinating. So we're going to jump on over here to India. Oopsies. India takes a very 
different approach. Uh, India is a rapidly developing country and has been increasingly adopting AI intelligence or uh, artificial intelligence, AI, in various sectors. One of the unique ways that India uses this technology, actually, is in social issues such as poverty, healthcare, education. And India has a large population and AI is being used to help provide access to resources, actually, and services for people in remote or underprivileged areas. So it's really good. And they, they also use the healthcare sector and AI is being used to develop affordable, accessible diagnostic tools. Uh, things like uh, the Indian Institution of Technology, IIT in Delhi. They um, developed an AI powered tool that can diagnose diabetes retinopathy. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, a leading cause of blindness in India. And this tool can be used in remote areas uh, as well, um, where there's not necessarily specialized doctors or limit limited access to doctors. In the education sector in India, AI is being used to provide personalized and interactive learning experiences for students in general. So companies like BYJU have developed AI-based learning platforms that provide adaptive learning experiences for students independently. And in their agriculture sector, AI is being used to help increase crop yields and efficiency. So companies like Agrostar have developed AI-powered um, mobile apps that provide real-time advice for farmers on crop management, soil equality, and weather forecasting. So in India, it's also very unique because their approach to data privacy and security is very um, broad. The Indian government has implemented strict regulations to protect the privacy of its citizens' data, and companies operating in, in India must comply with these regulations. It's just a must. So we're going to switch over here to Germany. Around the world, Germany has a distinct perception because AI is shaped by its historical and economical strengths and its cultural values. Germany is known for its engineering and manufacturing expertise, and AI is a critical enabler to the industrial competitiveness of the country. So German government, the German government, has been actively promoting AI through various initiatives and investments to establish the country as a hub of AI innovation and applications. So one exciting piece about uh, Germany is its approach to AI and its focus on industrial AI, which aims to increase efficiency, productivity, competitiveness in key areas such as manufacturing and logistics and energy. So this is really reflected in Germany's development of advanced AI systems for industrial 4.0 and the Internet of Things, the lot, um, which are transforming the ways that businesses operate, essentially. And another aspect I would say of Germany's outlook is AI is recognized or its recognition of the potential ethical and social implications of AI and its efforts to address these concerns are of the high most um, concern to them. For example, they've established the Ethics Commission of Automated Connected Driving, which brings together experts from industries, academia, and civil society to talk about the ethical use of autonomous vehicles and develop guidelines and for responsible use and development. So Germany's view of AI is characteristic to the combination of like a technical and ethical awareness and a commitment to using AI in enhanced industrial competitiveness. So that might be a great place for you to get to. Now we're going to jump across the world to China <laughs> with its rapidly evolving um, uh, concept of AI. It's shaped by sheer scale, remarkable uh, in all extent, the economical growth and its ambitious visions for the future. AI is a critical driver in innovation and social progress. And the Chinese government has been promoting these various initiatives and investments to become a world leader in AI innovation. Like that is their goal. It's very, very intense. <laughs> One intriguing aspect of China's approach to AI is focusing on practical applications, which aims to harness the power of AI to solve real world problems and improve people's lives. And you can see this directly reflected in China's rapid development of AI systems in fields such as healthcare, finance, transport, um, and all of these in which are transforming the way the businesses and individuals operate or run um, in, a, in a country um, concept. So another aspect of China's perception is its focus on data-driven um, AI, which leverages China's vast and growing data ecosystem and builds and trains AI models at scale. So this has the um, this has enabled China to make rapid progress in fields such as natural language processing and computer vision and is helping to establish the country as a leader in AI research and development. 
China also, I would define it as kind of a combination of technical innovation and ambition and a commitment to using AI to drive economical growth and advancements in scientific knowledge. So if we just go straight to the guts, let's go to the United States here. There's some fun facts I can tell you, but we'll get to that at the end here. Um, the United States actually has a very dynamic view on AI, shaped by its history of innovation and entrepreneurship spirit, so and cultural diversity too. AI is seen as a critical driver of economic growth, and one fascinating aspect, like truly, is its approach on focusing on cutting edge research and development, which aims to push the boundaries um, of what is possible with AI. And this is reflected through AI's world-class, or sorry, US's world-class um, universities, research institutions, and startup ecosystems, which are at the forefront of uh, AI innovation and discovery. So uh, the USA has established the National Security Commission of AI, which brings together experts from industry, again, academia, and the government to discuss AI and developing guidelines for responsible use and development and utilization. So that's super important. Uh, the US, I would define that as a combination of possibly technical ambition and like entrepreneurship. So we see a lot of that. Now, I'm just gonna get to Japan. We're gonna go back into Asia. Japan has such a unique perspective because it's kind of shaped from its history and culture. And Japan has been on the forefront of technical innovation for many years. And AI is seen as a way to drive economical prospects. And one aspect of that is AI is focusing on human-centered AI, which aims to enhance human capabilities and improve people's lives rather than simply replacing them. So they put a lot of effort and energy into things like um, their healthcare and development of advanced robotics and AI systems for healthcare aging populations and disability supports. So they have a different view altogether. Um, another aspect of that would be it, it's able to recognize the potential issues with it and its efforts to address these concerns. So Japan really knows that there are threats associated with AI. And for an example, they've established the Council of Promotion of Responsible AI and as a regulatory body to assist with governing the immersive technology. But still, nonetheless, they're very aware that it is um, potentially dangerous. And to them, I think it's characterized as more of a combination of technical technology, um, like technical optimism and like ethical vigilance and a commitment to using AI in ways that benefit both the individuals and society as a whole. So um, now we're just going to talk a little bit about education and awareness. This is my favorite part. Before we conclude anything, we must look into the risks and dangers associated with AI and the critical role of individuals entering into the software engineering and AI industries. AI can cause significant harm if it's developed and used irresponsibly, so it must be used responsibly. And one primary concern with this potential of AI and its ability to perpetuate or amplify existing biases and discrimination in society, for example, this is really bizarre, facial recognition systems have been proven less accurate for people with darker skin tones, resulting in false arrests and other harmful consequences. That's just devastating. So to address this, it's essential to use diverse and representative data sets to regular, sorry, regularly evaluate and address any biases in your AI systems. We can also ensure that the benefits of AI are shared by all rather than just a select few and that its impact on our, our society is a positive one and sustainable. So um, I guess Another aspect of this is research and development, and it's significant risk to AI to displace jobs and exasperate economy, economic inequality. Sorry, AI has the potential to animate many jobs that are dangerous, repeti repetitive, and low um, paying. However, it did it could also lead to widespread job losses, particularly in industries such as manufacturing and retail, putting many people out of work. To mitigate these risks, it's critical to ensure that workers retained and equipped and trained with the right skills necessary for jobs for the future and that the benefits of AI are distributed equitably. Sorry. 
Um, so now this is my most important thing. If you're going to remember one thing about me, remember my name is Opal and remember to start a conversation in your community. It's clear that the opinions and approaches towards AI vary significantly, but are similar in some aspects across the globe. So one thing is sure that the conversations around AI need to continue in our communities. People need to be informed and educated about the potential benefits and risks of AI and AI's um, so that AI can be made more informed and decisions about AI can impact our lives. So we really want to run this by the right people and, and take some ethics with you into this career. And we can start these conversations in our local communities by organizing things like workshops, panel discussions, and other events to bring experts in the field of AI and members of the general public together to discuss it. And this will allow people to learn uh, more about AI, ask questions, and share their thoughts and concerns. And by fostering these conversations amongst yourselves and in your communities, uh, we can work together with principles of ethics, like I was saying, and transparency and accountability to guide the development of the end use of AI. So just to conclude here, <clears throat> Um, in conclusion, I would say individuals entering the software engineering and AI industries it is critical to have a deep understanding of ethical implications of AI and to develop AI systems that are transparent, accountable and free of bias. And this can be achieved through rigorous education and training in ethics, human rights and social justice, as well as ongoing collaboration with various stakeholders including experts or policymakers in these areas. And AI has the potential to bring significant benefits to society, and we must be aware of its potential risks and take steps to mitigate them. So by being responsible and ethical in the development and use of AI, we can ensure that its impact on society, again, is equitable and sustainable. That's so important. But just some fun facts. I have some cool technologies I would love to list off to you. I may not pronounce them all correctly because I, I haven't dove, dove, in, dove into all these. But there's like TensorFlow. I'm sure maybe some of you have heard about that. It's an open source platform for building and deploying machine learning models created by Google. I personally haven't used it. But uh, there's Keras. It's a high-level uh, neural networks. API written in Python and capable of running on top of TensorFlow, CNTK, and Theno. So that's just another kind of AI you can use. Or there's PyTorch, which is a machine learning uh, library that provides easy to use APIs for building and training deep learning models created by Facebook. And OpenAI Gym, which is a great tool, uh, has a toolkit for developing and comparing reinforcing learning algorithms, including a collection of environments to test and benchmark different algorithms. So Hugging Face actually is a good one, a library for pre-trained models for natural language processing, including um, sentiment analytics and uh, language translation. So IBM Watson Studio, a cloud-based platform for building training and developing machine learning models developed by IBM. That's a great one to use. And Skit, Skit Kit, sorry, uh, is a library of like tools for processing model selection and evaluation. So just you'll have to explore these on your own. But uh, we're getting to some of my favorite ones, NVIDIA, so NVIDIA, uh, Deep Learning Institute is a place online where you can get training and you can really get the courses and resources for beginners or experts. And CAFE, C-A-F-F-E, a deep learning framework developed by Berkeley in AI research optimizes image classification and segmentation. But my favorite of all is chat bot, so chat GTP. And it's uh, questions provide information and generate text based on the user's input. So that's really fascinating and does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me speak. Hi. I think the questions take a little while to come in. No, it's I no just, problem. <laughs> I just wanted to say I also really like Jet Chat GPT, and I was actually um, talking. Um, to someone about that and he's like oh it's not fun anymore because you can put anything in there and they can do it for you <laughs> well now I think to add to that though you have to learn to speak computer so using these AI systems you can't just 
say like write me a code it it will do exactly what you tell it to do but if you're not if you don't have the right approach one great tip is use the word hypothetical so if you're trying to talk to an ai say hypothetically what would you do in this situation or, or whatever your question is how would you write a resume using different mm -hmm. language than we would normally use actually really amplifies the technology and people find it almost useless like oh we can just make whatever but can we because if we don't make it correctly or it like we it only knows what we know so yeah. it yeah. we really have to be careful <laughs> how we train it <laughs> exactly um i think Right now, there are no other questions, but That's if cool. there are any other questions, I'll let you know after. And you For can sure. also email her. Um, everything is in our website. 